Hi, my name is Peter Johnson, and I'm going to show you how to use Saxon, which is an XSLT processor. Saxon was written by Michael Kay, and he has put it up on SourceForge. It is now public domain, uh, open source software. And this is a tool that you can use to combine XML data with an XSLT instructions to create either another XML in a different format, uh, you can create a web page as X HTML, or you can create just plain text. Here's a preview of how XSLT works. You start out at the top with just plain XML data. Then you put it through the XSLT funnel, and that takes different nodes and text areas out of the XML and applies various rules to that. The way you do that is with a parser. Uh, one of the most popular is Saxon, but IE will do it. There's there's several different parsers out there that are available. Uh, you can also add CSS in as part of the XSLT uh, instructions. And then the results is an output document that you either display or print or uh, listen to. Now, in order for Saxon to work, Java is required to be on the computer. So you can test to see if you have Java in Windows by hitting the Start button, Run, and then type in CMD for Command. Type in Java and hit Enter, and you should see a Help screen. I have a sample of it here. It's much deeper, but this if you see this, then you know Java is installed. If you don't have Java installed, you can go out to java.com and download either the, the Java JDK or just the runtime environment, which is the RTE. Next, you're going to need Saxon, so you can go out to source, sourceforge.net slash projects slash Saxon, and you'll be able to download the most recent version. Unzip and rename the folder uh, to Saxon. Uh, when, when they save a, a version of Saxon, they have a version number built into the name, so you can cut all that off and just call your folder Saxon. It makes it much easier to access it. Saxon is just a standalone folder by itself. It works as a jar file, a Java jar file, and it doesn't change the Windows registry at all. This is a command line or a DOS utility, so you, you'll be using this the command window. And if you ever want to uninstall Saxon in the future, just delete the folder that you're working with. Here's a picture of the current SourceForge page showing you the different options that are available for Saxon. What you want to do is choose the, just the plain Saxon. Um, you can see we're up to version 9 now. Probably when you see this, it'll be a much higher version. There's also uh, other instant Saxon, which is a much older version that was used on uh, Windows 2000 and XP, as well as some other utilities. This screen is going to change, but basically I want to get the point across just to use the plain Saxon download and whatever the release number is. Now here's a view of my uh, file structure. And you can see over in the far left that we downloaded Saxon, in this case, version 9.1.0.5, and there's a J on there. And then I unzipped that file and renamed it to just plain Saxon. If you open up that Saxon folder, you'll see uh, several different files, but mainly you'll see a folder with documentation in it, some notices, a whole series of different jars. And jars are Java files that have been zipped up. Um, Java looks at a jar file, knows how to unzip it, and then run the contents in it. These jars are filled with diff different classes that can be used to do things with via Java. The file that you want to work with is Saxon and whatever number they've given it, .jar. 
Now this name, this jar file may change, but just look for the plain Saxon file dot jar. Up at the top of the list, you'll see where I've added in on this folder. I've added chapter.html, chapter.xml, and chapter.xsl. So I've added these three files. Now the XSL and the XML I pulled in from the tutorials from the resources. This can be any XSL, T file, or X and companion XML. The chapter.html is what we're going to produce with Saxon. So that's going to be our output file. So let's run Saxon. Now Saxon is an interpreter and, and you can run it from the command line. You can also run it from other programs such as Java or .NET programs. But in order to run Saxon, open up a command window. So click on the start button in Windows. Choose run and then type in CMD for command. Now, you'll have to change to where you stored the Saxon directory at. If it's on a different drive, just type that drive letter, a colon, and hit enter. If it's deeper into your directory structure, for example, maybe you saved it on your desktop, then you'll have to use CD for change directory to work your way down through the folders until you find the folder that has Saxon. So I usually do a CD and then I do a DIR to see the contents and another CD and I work my way through the folders that way. You can test your installation using this command line. Type in Java dash jar and then the name of the jar. In this case it's Saxon 9 dot jar um, although that may change depending on what version you're using. And like we did when we tested Java you should see a, a help display. And here's a picture of the help display that came out showing Saxon and the version number and all, all the different parameters that are available. So again, that was java-jar and then the name of the jar file. In this case, it was saxon9.jar, although that may change in future versions. So let's put Saxon to work. Now, this is what you want to type on all one line. And if you refer back to the help file, you'll see these various parameters listed. There's three parameters that you want to be uh, add onto your file. One is dash XSL colon, and that's going to list the XSL file that you want. That'll be your XSLT program. Then there's dash S colon, and that's your source file, so that will be your XML data. And then finally your dash O, that now that's a letter O, not, not a zero. So it's dash O colon, and that will be the name of your output file. Now my preference is to name these all three the same, changing the extensions to keep them separate. And that way, when you look at a directory structure, you'll see all three files all grouped together alphabetically. What's happening here is this is invoking Java to run the, the, the program and the, the, the dash jar tells it to look for that jar file. Java will um, uncompress the jar file and then run the, the classes inside of that and using these three parameters. So it'll read the XSLT file, bring in the data from the XML file, combine the two and the output file will be the .html file. Now depending upon what you're outputting you might change that to a .txt or some other uh, file extension. And if you're using the, the sample code, the XML and the XSLT named chapter, here's what your output will look like. And this is just looking at the chapter.html in a browser. If you go back through the XSLT, you'll see how each of these was formed, extracting pieces from the XML data and then handling based on the XSLT rules. As I mentioned earlier, Saxon is really designed to be used as part of an application. 
So if you're doing something on a regular basis, such as taking in code that's being sent via the web from XML files, and you want to create a consistent document every time, then you could write an XSLT file, and with a Java application or a .NET application, you could create a program that would be very easy to use, and people wouldn't have to go into the command line. Um, you could also do it from the command line, but it's it's a lot more efficient if you write a, like a Java application or a .NET application. For Java, you'd use the JAXP transformation API, and then there's also an API for .NET called the Saxon API for .NET. So that wraps up on how to use Saxon. You can use it to uh, create all the files you want, combining your XSLT rules with your XML data.